with a unilateral movement like a lunge, you get a lot more core activation. So it's improving balance and coordination, which is not just physiological, it's neurological as well. Your ability to do workouts that improve your metabolic rate while you're exercising, improve your energy expenditure. I guarantee you, you are going to be gassed. You're going to, your legs are going to be on fire and you are going to be out of breath and sweating. Hey there, I wanted to let you know about my latest book, Body Confident, that's coming out in September 2024. Call it a critical thinking guide to your health journey because it is a framework, a guide, a blueprint that's going to help you understand and be able to filter all the information that's out there on the internet that you're getting from social media, YouTube. Go to bodyconfidentbook.com, sign up for updates. The book comes out in September. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Coach Bronson here, and we're going to talk about one exercise that I have to admit I was wrong about. I have to change my stance on what I think the best lower body workout is for the average person, and we're going to get into that, why that is, what I'm changing from, and how I think it's going to impact your journey and absolutely change everything about how uh, you progress in your physical ability. Before we do that, please subscribe to this channel. Click on the bell so you're notified whenever I put out a new video, whether it's a video like this, an interview, or my weekly chats with Coach Nat. Also, share my channel with anybody you think is interested in improving their quality of life. I want to get this information into as many people's hands as possible to hopefully help people filter out information and figure out the best thing for them to move forward. All right? All right. I used to say, when someone asked me in the past, what is, if you could only do one exercise, what would that exercise be? What would be the one thing that you would have people do? And I would, I would say, that I used to say the squat. I would say the squat is probably the best full body workout. It requires uh, the most overall engagement of everything in the body. Now, it's always, honestly, it's kind of a tie between the squat and the deadlift. I think for different reasons, uh, if you polled all of the fitness coaches out there in the world, you probably would get a 50-50, maybe 60, 40, either way of squat versus deadlift as the two probably most important exercises. Here's why I'm changing and here's what I'm changing to. I still believe the squat and the deadlift both are very important exercises. They are very uh, impactful in improving the most overall um, musculature, central nervous system impact uh, all of the different things when we talk about what are we trying to do for health. But in many cases, they are not as accessible to people and the need for you, the need to get the, in order to get the most out of them going heavier than is needed for the average person to improve their quality of life is often part of that discussion and part of that equation, right? To get the most out of a squat, you've got to push it. You've got to push it really hard. The strain on the central nervous system, the strain on the body, the physical, the physiology of your body, when you're lifting heavy squats and deadlifts, not saying it's not safe, it's no less safe than anything else, but over time, and again, from an accessibility perspective, do people have access to that kind of equipment and that kind of weight? Can people do that by themselves at home without a spotter and without other things in place? There's, it's just another level of focus, intent, requirement, and environment that you need in order to really get into squatting and deadlifting at an appropriate amount to see the impact that you want to see. Now, what do I think we, we can replace that with? Okay, you guys are going to hate this because most people avoid this exercise as much as possible, but I am quickly falling in love with it the more I play around with it and seeing the impact in myself. I've been experimenting with a lot of things with lunging lately, and it has blown my mind the impact that I've been able to see in my own body from a hypertrophy perspective, building muscle, from a overall mobility and functional movement perspective. And most importantly, the versatility that I've been able to apply to my workouts with one movement pattern, the number of things that you can do with a lunging movement pattern, whether it's walking lunges, reverse lunges, side lunges, forward lunges in place, 
whether it's Bulgarian split squats, split squats, right? Front foot elevated lunge, back foot elevated lunge, the, the forward lean, the straight up and down, the, the number of things that you can do, the holding the weight at your side versus the hold, holding the weight in front of you in a front rack position. All of those things can change where you're feeling it, where you're focusing the work and your ability to target specifically areas that you cannot do with a deadlift and a squat. It allows for the accessibility factor of you can do lunges with no weight at all. You could do lunges with anything that you can put in your hands. You do not need any equipment. Okay. Pick up some water jugs, pick up your kid, pick up your cat, pick up your dog. It doesn't make a difference. Whatever you've got around, if you want to add resistance, you can add resistance. You don't need as much resistance because it's a unilateral movement. So you're only working primarily one leg at a time. Essentially, it's not exact, but essentially you're splitting the weight requirement in half. If you would normally need a hundred pounds to get something out of your squat in order to feel it and work the body and get the results that you need, you only need 50 pounds or less, often it's less, it's less than fit. It's less, less than half percent, right? Because the requirement for, um, stabilizer and supporting ex supporting musculature, right? Core engagement. When you're doing unilateral work, it's not just the primary muscle that's working. There's a lot more core stabilization and other things that have to happen in order for you to move that weight. So the overall weight requirement actually drops more than half because it's a much more complicated movement. But does it work? Holy crap, guys. Once you start figuring out how to do lunges and the different ways you can do them and start applying the different aspects of simple things like do your lunges, a normal lunge, but one time do it where you're leaning forward, right over your knee and feel how much your glutes are activated. Do another lunge where you're sitting more straight up and down and feel how much your quads are activated. You could, do a, you could do a lunge workout two times a week and get more of a glute workout one day and more of a quad workout the other day. It's versatile. You can do all sorts of things with it. So understanding that it's essentially the same movement pattern as a squat, right? The ba basically the same thing. It is a functional movement. Lunging is a functional movement. Being able to walk up and down the stairs is a lunging movement. If you can improve lunging, then it's going to affect all aspects of your life. It's unilateral. It increases the individual strength of each leg while activating more of your core, which improves balance and coordination more than squatting does. Squatting, you are in one place and you're moving up and down. There is basic, basic stabilization so you don't lose structure in how you push power through the bar. But from a core activation, from a stability perspective, which is front, back, and side and twisting, you don't get that with a, with a squat. With a unilateral movement like a lunge, you get a lot more core activation. So it's improving balance and coordination, which is not just physical, physical it's neurological as well. Um, your ability to do workouts that improve your metabolic rate while you're exercising, improve your energy expenditure. I guarantee you, if you do 10 steps per leg with the challenging weight five times, right? 20 total steps. At the end of that, do a, a 30 second rest in between. You are going to be gassed. You are going to be gassed. You're going to, your legs are going to be on fire and you are going to be out of breath and sweating. Okay. It is a great way to improve your VO2 max, improve your resting heart rate, improve hypertrophy, build muscle, improve mobility, improve balance, improve coordination, and improve functional movement and just your general ability to do things in life. Okay. If there is one exercise, that I would recommend everybody do on a consistent basis to improve the most they possibly can for their lower body, strength in particular, mobility and coordination, but general metabolic function by increasing lean mass, by increasing resting heart rate, VO2 max, all of the things, okay? I would recommend that everybody lunge on a consistent basis. Lunges, Bulgarian split squats, split squats, front uh, re forward lunges, reverse lunges, walking lunges, whatever it may be, right? Whatever variation. You want to do lunges with the weight holding down. You want to do overhead lunges. You want to put kettlebells on your shoulders. Whatever you want to do, if you can start lunging more often, even if it's just body weight. I have a lot of people that I work with who 
just lunging with no added weight at all, just holding onto the side of a couch and being able to go down to one knee and stand up again is a challenge. Do that more often. If that's where you are, do that more often. That is going to absolutely rock your world. All right. Am I saying only do lunges? That's the only thing you need to do? No. But if you need to do something, if you're not sure what to focus on, I would say try and get some lunging in on a regular basis and see what happens. All right. Hope that helps, guys. If you have any questions on how to modify lunges or what other types of lunges or split squats and things like that, that movement pattern you can do, go check out my YouTube, the, check out the YouTube channel in my movement and exercise library. I've got over 300 videos in there, of all kinds of different exercises and movements that can help you figure out what's going to work out for you. All right, take it easy. All right, guys, you know I am a fan of protein. You know that prioritizing protein is a key aspect to the fundamental concepts of nutrition. I highly recommend for those people who need the help in increasing their protein intake, Equip Foods Beef Isolate Protein Powder. They have a ton of different flavors, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, salted caramel, coffee flavor. It is the cleanest and most effective protein powder that I have ever used. 